Welcome to the on-page SEO module video number one. We're going to talk about the basics, the fundamentals, and the things you absolutely need to know going into on-page SEO. And then in the next videos, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into optimizing content, internal linking, auditing, and different topics like that. For now, let's start with, again, the absolute basics. And that is, what is on-page SEO? Well, here's a basic definition for you. On-page SEO is the process of tweaking a page to get more traffic and again, ideally better quality traffic from search engines. Now that sounds relatively simple, is tweaking again elements on the exact page. Now this is in contrary to what we say off-page SEO, which is the process of building external signals, things like backlinks, to increase traffic from search engines. Notice the opposite there is on page, which is optimizing the page itself, then off page, which is external signals. Now, I believe this is important for three reasons. Relevance, intent, and engagement, right? So we already talked about in the first video in this entire course, it was about art, which is authority, relevance, and trust, right? Well, relevance, again, is huge for this, is optimized and using that keyword data you already have, is optimizing our pages to be relevant to those keywords, right? But beyond that, it's also matching the intent, which we talked about quite a lot already in the keyword research module. And it's also about engagement, because if you have relevant content, you match the intent, but they click onto your website, and it's a thousand words of content, there's no paragraph breaks, it's just a massive blob of text. Well, that is terrifying and there's going to be no engagement and that will absolutely not help your ranking. So it's the combination of relevance, intent and engagement. And if we were to talk about different areas, i.e. factors that will influence these rankings, again, on an on-page SEO specific basis, then it's going to be things like the URL, the title tag, the meta description, the H1, the subheadings, internal links, keyword density, and all this stuff you can see on the screen right here, which is what we're going to break down in this module. Now, note that I also mentioned and more because frankly, there is a lot that goes into this. I just want to highlight the main things that you absolutely need to know when you can look into the more nuanced options and advanced stuff later. But really, this covers pretty much the fundamentals and really get you 95% of the way there. Now, the important thing to note is that on-page SEO is about, again, relevance, meaning that if you haven't already, go back watch the previous video on keyword research because if we don't know what keywords to target on this page, then how can we be relevant to those keywords, right? We're not just blindly guessing here, we're using that previous data from the previous videos, the editor can show it, and then we're using that to optimize the content on this page so it's relevant to the keywords that we selected. So for example, we have, say, the URL of the page. So does that URL contain that main keyword that we selected? We have the title tag of the page. Well, how can we optimize the title tag for both the main keyword and ideally some of the secondary keywords that we want to focus on? And the H1, again, the same thing. How can we optimize the H1 for that main keyword that we're focused on? And the subheadings, how can we optimize those subheadings to include secondary keywords within that overall topic? It is essentially using that keyword data to then optimize the page. Now, the way we're gonna do this is in four different steps. We're going to start off again with the fundamentals of SEO. This is the things that are absolutely the same pretty much all the time. They follow best practices and it's really just things you absolutely need to know on an on-page SEO level. And then we're going to dive into more advanced stuff, which is with your content, how do you optimize that content specifically? So yeah, we're going to cover the fundamentals, but what's the more nuanced stuff? What's the more advanced stuff to optimize that content to increase your rankings? And then we'll go into internal linking, which is absolutely huge for boosting up your pages, basically link between different pages on your own website. We'll have a video dedicated to that. And then we'll tie all this together because look, you have your fundamentals, you have your content, you have your internal linking, but how do you decide where to focus? How do you really look at this and decide what is the priority, what to do, anything like that? Well, that is auditing. And we're going to cover that in the fourth video in this module. So what I've done is I opened up a few keywords on Ahrefs Keyword Explorer. And you can see here, rank and rent is the keyword. There's 250 searches a month. Let's scroll down to the actual rankings, the top 10 ranking websites. And what do we need to determine from this? We need to determine the intent and the type of content. So what can we see here? The number one site 
the intent here is just informational and it is a guide. This is informational and it's a guide. This is informational and it's a guide, I believe. I think so. Build and rank and rent websites for finding money. I'm be I, I believe this is a guide. Rank and rent, this is a guide. Informational, informational guide. Informational guide, it's obviously my own website. Informational, this one isn't a guide. It's more of like a, a news informational piece. So this was not a guide. This one is informational, but again, it's not a guide. It's, it's a question, it's Reddit. And then this one, again, is a guide. So what can we determine about this? Probably, if you want to rank for this keyword, firstly, it has to be informational because every single top 10 websites is an informational page. Beyond that, we probably want to write a guide unless we want to try and do something completely different and hope that we can rank for it also. But you can see here that Google seems to like guides because almost what was it, eight out of the 10 websites ranking are guides, right? So if I was to create a piece of content around this, I'd create, which I already did, is a guide on how to do rank and rent. Very, very simple. We're matching informational intent and we're matching the right type of content also, which is a how-to guide and probably quite a detailed one, right? Moving on to the next keyword, we have smart luggage. Now, this is an example I found for an e-commerce store recently where their main keyword, they sell smart luggage. Now, if you look at smart luggage, you're thinking, okay, there's 1,600 searches a month, there's $2.50 cost per click average. This is a pretty good keyword. However, here's the problem. If I scroll down a little bit further, you see the top 10 results. Number one is Mashable, best smart luggage 2019. Number two is actually maybe someone that does sell smart luggage, so that's good, okay? Number three is best smart luggage 2021. Number four is Amazon. Again, that is shopping in 10. The next one is Forbes, five of the best smart, again, best. Next one, digital trends, best. Next one, trip savvy, eight best smart luggage. Number nine, the best smart luggage for 2020. And you can see here that more often than not, with this keyword, it isn't actually stores selling smart luggage. It is in many cases, people reviewing what is the best smart luggage. Now look, that doesn't necessarily mean we can't rank because if you do go ahead and look at this, you see that there is, of course, this one, which is a shopping in 10, and then Amazon, which is also shopping in 10. But beyond that, every single other page, so eight out of the 10 results are not shopping in 10. The customer investigation, again, with lists. So realistically, we may find it's gonna be difficult to rank for this keyword unless we have that same type of content. So that is a potential issue with this keyword. Now, one more example for you. This one is Pomeranian haircut. So I have a Pomeranian, he's sleeping over there. And if you look up this keyword, there are 2,000 searches per month. And if you scroll down, what type of results come up? Well, we have 35 best Pomeranian haircut ideas, top five Pomeranian haircut styles, Pomeranian haircut styles, 45, 9, 21. What can you see here basically is mostly lists or roundups, you could call it a roundup list of different styles of haircuts for Pomeranians. So again, the intent here is very, very clearly informational. No one is selling haircuts, it's information, it's lists of haircut styles. And beyond that, again, the type of content is like a list or like a roundup, we wanna call that, of again, haircut styles for Pomeranians. So it's really, really important we understand this because we may be, say, a, what do you call them? A, a dog groomer, I was gonna say barber for dogs. Um, dog groomer, and we're thinking, okay, Pomeranian haircuts is 2,000 searches a month. We sell Pomeranian haircuts, so let's target this keyword, and yet you have no chance of ranking for it because again, it's all lists of information posts ranking, so it's the wrong intent. So make sure before you go into this, you get the intent right. So again, just to recap, there are four types of intent you really want to look out for. There is informational intent, there is customer investigation intent, there is shopping intent, and there is local business intent. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the keyword research module because I explain this in much more detail. But beyond this, there is also the type of content. And in this case, there's really four main types. There's probably more I'm missing, but here's four main example types for you to look into. There is guides, as in here's a full guide on how to do ranking rent. There's a roundup, as in here's a list, a roundup of 15 different haircut styles for Pomeranians. There's reviews where we're reviewing like best smart luggage. And there is how to, which can be kind of similar to a guide, but you can also have smaller 
guide, you know, like how to cut your Pomeranian's head, how to groom your Pomeranian, something like that, right? There's different types of content, and I'd recommend not only checking the intent, but also checking the right type of content for this intent also. Dude is snoring. But also, <laughs> but also making sure you have the right type of content for this keyword and this intent also. So anyway, moving on to those fundamentals again, that covers intent. Let's go through the rest of them one by one. And I'll try and make this quick because I know it's YouTube and there's probably some cool video in the recommendations. That is way more fun than, well, this, right? So going into the first one, page URL. And you probably know what this is. If you see here, you have the website.com, you have slash, again, whatever the permalink is, the page URL you have. In this case, they're trying to rank for best smoker reviews. So guess what the URL is? It is best smoker reviews. I mean, who knew? It's actually pretty simple here, and it's really, really simple. Here's the guidelines for this, okay? Number one, keep these short, meaning that don't have like a super long URL because it just reads horribly. It's bad for users, and it's not even good for search engines neither, so just keep these short. It is much, much better. Now, in terms of a template, just to make this easier for you, here's a very, very simple one. You have slash category, slash subcategory, slash main keyword. For example, you have slash mattresses, slash memory foam, slash the Casper, which is the name of the product or the brand that you're selling, right? So it's really, really simple. Now, what if you have a really, really simple store and it's just a blog, so not even a store, just a blog. You have a simple website that's a blog. We could just have slash blog post name or slash blog, slash blog post name. You can keep this really, really simple. But if you have a more complicated site, that's kind of the structure you want to go for, slash category, slash subcategory, slash main keyword. Really, really simple. Again, if you have a best survival knife page, then it's just going to be slash best survival knife because you don't have categories or subcategories. It's really, really easy. Just include the main keyword. Don't think about it too much, right? Beyond that, one thing to be careful of is to not repeat words. For example, if you have a category for dog products, and then you have a subcategory for dog foods, well, what can end up happening is you have slash dog, slash dog food, slash dry dog food as the product name or the subcategory again within that name. Now, the problem at this point is that you have dog, dog food, and dry dog food, as in you have dog mentioned three times and dog food mentioned two times. So you're repeating words and phrases more than one time. This can lead to over-optimization potentially, and it's just something to be cautious of. Does that mean that if you do this, you're gonna get instant penalty, your rank is gonna drop, and you're absolutely screwed? No, it doesn't. You can do this, you can get away with it. It's just something to be a little bit cautious of. I'd prefer, preferably, not to repeat words. Now, does that mean, again, some websites do this and they get away with it? I just prefer not to because it's better to, again, not potentially over-optimize the page, especially when you optimize in other areas like your backlinks, your anchor tags, and other on-page elements. And the other thing I recommend is if you're watching this right now and you already have blog posts and pages and everything in place, I prefer that you didn't change the URLs unless absolutely necessary. Now, what does absolutely necessary mean? It means that if your URL is currently slash one, two, three, four, blah, 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 just a bunch of characters and craziness, then hey, change that because it's a mess, it's bad for users, it's just a bad overall experience, right? You can also change it if you have absolutely no backlinks to the page and no internal links, then sure, go ahead and change it, it's not that big a deal, it's a new page, it's fine. The only reason I wouldn't want to change it is because it adds complications because then you have to go ahead and redirect the old URL to the new one. It just gets messy. It just gets complicated. And you're also hoping that firstly, the new page ranks as good as the old page and that 100% of the value from the old page in terms of the backlinks and links and stuff like that is passed to the new page. In short, you don't even need to know what I just said. Just don't change URLs again unless you absolutely need to do it. Now, one other thing to note is this. If you're using certain platforms, they add things to the URL and you can't really control it. For example, Shopify, they add slash collections for categories or slash products for, well, products, right? Well, you can't control this. You can't remove this. You have no control over this whatsoever. Does it matter at all? No, it doesn't matter in the slightest, right? Same with WordPress, the add slash product category. Now, if you're a nerd like me with WordPress, then you can change this, 
but it's not really that important. I like it because I'm weird, I like short URLs, and it just bothers me mentally because I'm a nutcase. But beyond that, it's really not that important, and I really wouldn't worry about it if you're adding collections, product URL, product category, and things like that to your URLs. Again, if you want to change it, you can. I just wouldn't really think about it. It's not that important, right? So if you have this stuff, it doesn't matter. What does matter if you don't have any keywords optimization in your URLs. So again, it's just like page ID equals five, right? But if it's something like that, then it's not optimized in any way. So make sure it is optimized at least with the platform you're using. But beyond that, it's not really that important if you have collections or product category or something in the URL also. Now, what I wanna do is open up the previous sheets I showed you and just give you a quick example of how I pick URLs. Because again, it's really easy. It's just looking at that main keyword. All right, so I'm in the keyword mapping sheet once again, and what am I going to do? Well, let's just scroll through this and let's just pick out a random example, okay? So we have men's sleeveless t-shirts, right? Or t-shirts, right? I don't know which one has the highest search volume, t-shirts, but it doesn't particularly matter in this case. But anyway, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over to this keyword, I'm gonna grab it, and you actually, you can already see they've already done it, right? So here's, they already have this page in place already, I don't even need to do it, right? So you have such collections, again, this is Shopify, so they have to have that, but after that, they have full control, so they've gone ahead and inserted the keyword, and they've also added an additional word, which is gym. That may be a secondary keyword, or may just be a something they added in because they just wanted to add it in, right? So for example, if I was to pick this one and they didn't see this, here's what I would do. I would do, what is that website, HTTPS, oops. HTTPS, gymware.co.uk, it'd be www, but whatever, slash collections, slash men's, sleeveless. Guess what I'm gonna do next, guys? I'm gonna do t-shirts, right? Now you can do t-shirts with a space, without a space, whatever. By default, it seems to be half the extra hyphen, so you can probably just add that in, and that's done. That's a URL, okay? Really simple, let's show another one, right? We have beef isolate. Guess what I'm gonna do, guys? I'm gonna do slash collections. I'm gonna type the whole thing because I'm lazy. Slash collections slash beef isolate. Now, whether this is a product or a category, it doesn't matter for this just example. Obviously, you wanna check this yourself, but that's basically how it works. And you can just scroll through any of these. Again, we have funky gym leggings. Now, here's how we do this. In Shopify's case, we have zero control, so it's gonna be slash collections slash funky gym leggings. If you have a little bit more control, what I'd actually prefer would be slash leggings. So it'd just be like slash leggings or slash gym leggings. Again, if you don't sell other types of leggings, so we'll just do slash gym leggings slash funky, right? That's what I actually prefer because it's, it's better, it's hierarchical, but it doesn't matter. If you can't do that with the platform you're on, like Shopify, then just do it the other way, it doesn't matter. But can you see what I'm doing here? All I'm doing is including the main keyword. One thing to note here is I did slash gym leggings slash funky. I didn't do slash gym leggings slash funky gym leggings because what happens then? Well, I've repeated gym two times and gym leggings two times and leggings two times, right? So gym leggings is two times in there. It's just potentially over-optimized. All I'm doing is including gym leggings slash funky because you can already determine that it's funky gym leggings for the fact that it's in the gym leggings category. So that's just a really, really quick example. Essentially, include the main keyword and don't overthink it. Moving on to the title tag, which most of you will probably know is what shows in the Google search results. You have the URL, the title tag, and the meta description. This just describes the content on your page. It's a very, very important element. Now, if you don't know the basics of HTML, I highly recommend you learn them because it's relatively simple and will massively help with your overall SEO understanding by knowing that if you look in the source code for the title tag, as you can see here in the second box here, then this will massively help you with researching, just understanding how this whole thing works. And this is really simple. Here's the guidelines for this, but you can already see here, you basically just want to focus on the main keyword as always, right? So here's the guidelines anyway. So firstly, there is a length limit. The length limit is actually 600 pixels. What does that mean? It means that it's not character-based because I is this, whereas W is, well, this, right? I guess that is right. So it's one single character, but it's more pixels, it's wider, right? So it's actually pixel-based, but what it ends up being is roughly 50 to 60 characters. So just treat it as that and just keep it simple, right? Beyond that, here is a basic template for you. And again, this is just a basic template because it, well, depends, right? So the basic template is main keyword, secondary keyword, brand name. For example, you could have 
plumbers in London, right? So that is your main keyword. Your secondary keyword is going to be 24-hour emergency service, and then your brand name is going to be Line Zero or whatever your site is named, right? So we have plumbers in London, 24-hour emergency service. What I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to rank for both plumbers in London, emergency plumbers in London, 24-hour plumbers in London, and all of those keywords are all kind of squeezed into that single title tag. Now, in many cases, I don't go this complicated, and I literally just have by category name online, right? So buy leather sofas online, and that is it. And then I just have the brand name after that. And it's really, really simple, right? But that's all it is. Just include the main keyword. And optionally, if you can, squeeze in a couple of those secondary keywords. Again, if and only if you can. Now, beyond that, again, the same advice applies here. Don't repeat keywords, don't repeat words, unless you absolutely need to. Sometimes you just don't have a choice because there's no other way of saying it, and other times, well, you have a choice. For example, here you have buy beds, wooden beds, metal beds. This is a site, this is a real example of sort of site, and it's just over-optimized in my opinion. They could say buy beds, wooden, metal, and whatever else other types of beds you have, I don't know. But you don't have to repeat the word beds over and over again. They can see that it's the buy beds page, you don't need to say there's wooden beds and metal beds, they're just over-optimizing, okay? So don't repeat words as always. This is a good rule just in general for most important elements like this. I also recommend, this is, again goes without saying, create a custom title tag for every page. This again comes up later in the auditing process, but what you find if you don't do anything, you can have a ton of pages with identical title tags. Again, just don't do that, okay? So just change to make sure there's a custom one for every page on your site. And it literally means every page on your site, every product, every category, the whole works. Now again, if you're starting out, you don't need to go through all this effort. You could just kind of template this so it's the same thing. So it just says buy product name online. It just changes out the product name just to make this easier. But in the future, you may want to go in there and customize that a little bit further. The next tip for you is to prioritize important keywords first. What does that mean? It means at the beginning of your title tag, try and include the main keywords. In many cases I see with e-commerce stores, they try and get a brand name at the beginning and the keyword after. I believe actually it's a strong optimization if you have the keyword near the front of the title tag. What that means, if your keyword is leather sofas, then at the beginning have leather sofas. Whereas it's buy leather sofas, have buy leather sofas, right? Put that at the beginning of the title tag, then after, put whatever you want, wherever it's to get people to click, whether it's your brand name, whatever you want, but put the keyword at the beginning and the main keyword specifically. And the final tip for you is to treat this like an ad and focus on CTR, which stands for again, click through rate, meaning you want people to actually click on your page. So when you rank in, say, the top five, go in there and tweak the title again and add something in there that emphasizes, hey, why should they visit your website versus the competitors? Right, so that can just be specific numbers. It could be 47 products reviewed rather than just products reviewed because by being specific, that kind of encourages more clicks. It could also just be mentioning, hey, we have more products. Number people again mention how many products, we have free shipping, we have next day delivery, whatever it is, just mention some benefits. Why should they visit your page versus everyone else's on the first page? Now again, I don't wanna leave you just handing here, so let's give a quick example of how this works. So I've grabbed a few URL and keyword examples here, and let's just write out a quick title tag. Just an example off the top of my head using this data. So we have scrunch leggings here. Let's just do this, right? So we can see here there's bum scrunch leggings and, and other types here, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to do um, the main keyword is, is scrunch leggings, but bum scrunch leggings also makes sense. So I'm just going to do buy bum scrunch Again, the problem for this is I have no idea what any of this stuff means, so it doesn't really mean anything to me. UK, and let's just do it nice and short, and then the website is gym wear, right? So I'm just going to do buy bum scrunch leggings UK. You can also do wretched, but I don't know what it is, so I don't know how to. If I knew what it was, I'd probably try and include it, or shorts, or anything like that, um, but I don't. I'll just do shorts, because I can do that. Buy bum scrunch leggings and shorts UK, and then has gym wear, right? Or this one here. I'm deliberately including um, buy and UK, even though I don't see it in the secondary keywords, just because I know that this 
it just happens sometimes people search for this. So it just it extra keyword includes. Same with UK, a lot of people will search like Jim Crow's. I don't have it in this list because it didn't do conclusive research, but most likely some people search for Jim Clothes UK or buy Jim Clothes, so we may as well just include it. Right, so buy Jim Clothes UK, or you could do online UK, right? Or you could even emphasize CTR a little bit more. Um, I don't know, huge selection. I don't know, I'm just make, making this up, but example of something you'd want to do. And then you just have um, uh, gym wear, right? Or gym wear with space, whatever. Now, huge selection absolutely sucks, but I'm just giving an example of how you can kind of squeeze stuff in there if you wanted to, right? This one, here's a better example because I actually understand what it, what it is. Ranking rent, right? So, Rank and when web rank and rent sorry rank and when rank and rent websites let's do rank and rent websites websites um, I don't have a length in here so it's hard to determine the length okay I I I, I can't figure out the length. But let's just presume that's roughly there or thereabouts, okay? So rank and rent websites is the main keyword. Local SEO is, um, we have local businesses. I didn't, I didn't specifically mention businesses, but that's okay. And I mentioned SEO, obviously, because rank and rent SEO. So we can hit rank and rent websites, rank and rent SEO, um, and guide, because that's the intent. So I just want to show clearly that that is the intent, right? You could also, if you wanted to, obviously, you don't need to do exclusively for SEO could also be for um, just users, right? So ranking websites, we've got a main keyword right at the beginning there just because it's easier. We have ultimate SEO guide because again, we want to attract clicks and not just search engines, right? So just quick examples. And the other one, well, this one's pretty easy because it's just Bosch table saw reviews. Um, by the looks of it, this one was weird because the actual page ranking is a Bosch 41 table. 100 table saw versus not just the Bosch table saws, but let's just focus, pretend this is the main keyword here. So I'm just going to copy it in because I don't know what any of this stuff is. Bosch 4100 table saw review. I think you know what people do? They always do this like read this first. Um, um, I don't know. Something for, you can obviously just have the website there, which is best scroll saw. But honestly, I don't think they really care about their brand of a domain like that. So um, 15 um, things you need to know. I, I'm making it up because I don't know the length, but it seems there or thereabouts correct. But I'm just, I'm just doing something, just an example, just to show how, you, again, you could emphasize not only including the keyword which you have in there, but also like, hey, get some people to click this, treat this as an actual ad. Next, we have the meta description, which also shows in the Google search results. And it basically just describes, hey, here is the content on the page. And again, if you learn the basics of HTML, then you know how to look at the code and find this under a meta name attribute. Okay, very, very simple. And the guidelines for this are simple, right? So number one, length. Again, length does actually matter. And that is a max length of around, give or take, 155 to 160 characters. I kind of limit at that around 155 character limit. Now, a basic template for you, call out the reader, call out the person you want to visit your page, highlight the benefits and include a call to action. Again, just quickly jump back to the previous slide you can see here, looking for the best meat smoker. That is your, that is your call out. That is, hey, are you looking for this? Is this thing you're looking for, this is the keyword you search, right? Are you looking for this? Obviously they are, right? Then you highlight the benefits, right? Expert reviews and compare features of the best and cheapest electronics electronic, electric smokers, right? That also serves in their case as an actual call to action, which is read expert reviews, right? So it's both the benefits and the CTA in this case, right? So just make sure you're doing that, right? Also make sure it's relevant to your content slash keyword. Again, you want this to actually show up and not just a random snippet on your page. And if it's not relevant to the keywords someone search, then they won't show it. Again, they'll just show that random snippet of content on your page. So make sure it's relevant to your main and secondary keywords, ideally. Beyond that, again, make sure this is custom for every page. When you're starting out, use a template to minimize this. When you start ranking well, go in there and then specifically customize this to, again, emphasize getting more clicks to your page specifically. Now, I also recommend to do that, you do two things. Number one is you take full advantage of the length here. 
So if you've got the length, then just show it off. Why not, right? So if you have 155 characters, then use it. Then don't just have 50 characters or 70 characters. Use that full length. And then the second thing is within that space, within that length, then also emphasize why they should click your website versus your competitors. Again, have a call to action and again, highlight benefits. Why should they visit your page versus others? Treat this as if it was an ad. Treat this as if you were paying to be there because with the work and time and probably even just money invested, you actually are, right? Now, again, quick examples of this. So again, I'm back in the sheet. Let's do a really quick example. Again, I have no idea what any of this stuff is, but let's just do a quick basic template. Again, let's just do the simple one, right? Looking for bum scrunch leggings, right? Bum scrunch leggings. Shop now, right? I just made this up on the spot, but you can kind of see what, what's going on here. Looking for bum scrunch leggings. We have over 50 stars that are from 1999. Shop now. What am I doing here? I'm calling them out. Hey, are you looking for these bum scrunch legging fins? Then I'm, I'm saying, what is the benefits? We have over 50 styles and it's start from only £19.99. Again, this is probably fake, right? Shop now is our simple call to action. It doesn't need to be any complicated. It's just a simple call to action, right? Same here, right? Next one, okay? I'm making this up as I go along. I, I, I don't have any length count in this sheet, which I would normally have. Uh, so I'm just making this up. I have no idea. But basically, hey, what am I doing? Call them out. Hey, want to learn rank and rent SEO? That's what they're searching for, right? Well, here's the benefits. Here's how to rank a site, rent it out, and build a five-figure portfolio. Read the full guide. So that's just two quick examples there. Again, same process, same template. Call them out, highlight the benefits, and ask them to click to your website. Very, very simple. The next item on the list is the H1, the heading one element. This is the main heading on the page. You'll see it on every page. If you go into a blog post and there's a big title at the top, if the marking is up correctly, this should be wrapped in a H1 tag. And again, learn code, learn the basics of HTML because this will absolutely help you when you're doing your auditing and your analysis. As you can see here in the second box, it's just wrapped in a H1 tag. And obviously this is the main title of the blog post or the main title of the product category or the product name on a product page or anything like that. It is really, really simple. Now going into the guidelines, as we always do, the first thing is there is no length limit. You can be as big as you want here and there's no issues whatsoever. What I'd recommend though, is not trying to fit in a bazillion keywords, so definitely do that to a degree, but actually focusing more on your readers. After all, if your title sucks, then why would they read your article? So focus more on readers, but again, as always, squeeze in that main keyword. Right, now what we wanna do here is make sure there's only one H1 on the page. There's been recently discussions about this and Google's saying, that, yeah, if there's more than one, they're smart enough to determine the topic of the page. Still though, I still wouldn't recommend having more than one H1. It's just not best practices. Even if they can understand it, why not make it easier and why not have it marked up correctly, okay? So what does this mean? It means that if you have a theme that has your logo at the top marked up as a H1, then well, that is wrong. So don't do it, okay? It's really simple. Make sure the title of the page, as in the main heading on the page is the H1 and you're good to go. It's really, really simple. And from there, what I would recommend doing is basically, again, just including the main keyword, really simple, and then probably doing something a little bit extra. So it's not just the main keyword. For example, if the main keyword is best survival knife 2020, then we want to mark that up and write that in a way that just reads well for humans. So how can we do that? Well, just a quick example. What is the best survival knife of 2020? Full guide, right? Or even just full analysis, or even just what is the best survival knife of 2020? And make it a question, make it a sentence, and not just best survival knife 2020, right? Just emphasize humans and people and not just search engines. 
Now again, quick example of how to do that in the good old spreadsheet here. And let's just do a couple of these. Number one, scrunch leggings is really, really easy because this is a product category on a store, meaning that you basically would just have the name of the category with good research in mind, meaning this one is bum scrunch leggings. Guess what our H1 is, All right? Bum scrunch, here's a good one, leggings. Really, really simple. Now, if I wanted to, I could absolutely just add, say, UK in here, but that's really all it is. It's just bum scrunch leggings. Um, UK is optional if there's a decent search volume for it. That's it. It's really simple, right? What about a blog post? Let's do a different one. Rank and rent websites. Again, what would I do here? Well, rank and rent, I can I keep saying it. Rank and rent websites, or I could just do rank and rent SEO. Probably want to include the main keyword versus the main keyword. Ranking web websites um, step by step guide or something like that, right? Or I could do longer if I wanted to because there's no limit, right? Um, step by step guide to renting Now I'm just making this up as I go along. I'd probably actually put some effort into this later. But for example, if I, I was doing this, I just have some ranking rent SEO, so I'm hitting a different keyword at the beginning, but that's okay. Step by step guide to rent local websites to, to rent websites to local businesses. So I'm hitting like multiple different keywords in here all at one time. Now again, do you need to do this? No, I just focus more on the on the main keyword most of the time because I could probably have rent websites to local businesses as a H2 rather than H1. I'm just giving like a quick example off the top of my head. It could also just be rank and rent SEO, um, step by step guide again, like I started with, right? I'm just giving examples how to do it. Again, this one's really easy because it's just gym clothes. So again, it's the homepage, right? So I'd probably do it, it's a homepage, you'd probably have a bit more of a, of a, of a category here. So I'm just gonna buy gym clothes online, right? So you could have a little bit more. This one here is, um, so this is the title tag we have. Again, I'd actually, this could literally just be Bush Table Saw Review, right? It could actually just be the hedge one. It doesn't need to be any longer. If you want to have something longer, again, you could do something like this, right? 15 things you must know, things like this. But honestly, this could just be the hedge one. Don't overthink it. Get your main keyword in now and just make it readable. Make it, like, give it a hook and make people want to read your content. It's simple. Don't overthink it too much. After your H1, you have your subheadings. This is your H2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? Now, usually you probably won't use every single one of them, but basically these are just your subheadings and they're pretty important, again, for your secondary keywords. So you can see an example of this here, and they're wrapped up in a H2 tag, but it could just as easily be wrapped up in a H3 tag, a H4 tag, or again, a H6 tag all the way up to that way. Right, now again, guidelines for doing this are simple. You can have unlimited, you can have multiple H2s, H3s. You can only have one H1, right? You should anyway, when you have one H1. But you can have five, 10, 20 H2s. You can have 100 H3s. You can have as many as you want for every single one of these. Now, what I recommend here is not to overthink this as always and just prioritize including secondary keywords in your H2s because this is again, your secondary elements here in terms of headings, right? So you have your main heading, this is your main keyword, and then your H2s are your secondary keywords, and they've hidden all those secondary keywords there. Now, I recommend on top of this, treat this in a hierarchical way, just because it's well better, and again, how it's intended to be used. Meaning that your H1 is the main topic on the page, the H2 is the subtopics within that main topic, and then within the H2s, you have H3s, for again, topics within that subtopic, and then within that, you have H4s, and so on and so forth. Again, you probably don't have any more than H3s unless your theme uses it in some way, like the footer or a sidebar or something like that, but that's really it. Like, you don't need to go that in depth unless you, again, really, really do need to go that in depth, but most times, well, you don't, right? Now, my advice for this is really simple. Just look up your competition and just copy what they're doing and then copy what is working, which pretty much applies to every area of SEO if you understand why exactly you're doing it. For example, I'm on Ahrefs Keyword Explorer here, and if I go over to these sites that I was competing against, for example, and then I could actually look up those sites and say, okay, what subheadings do these guys have? And you can scroll through here, you can see here, they have what is rank in rent, okay? They have another one for what are the benefits of rank in rent? Why do rank in rent? And so on. And I can literally just build up a list of them and just kind of copy what those guys are doing. How do I get started with ranking rent websites, right? This is the H2s. This is probably a H3, judging by the size, without actually checking a 
code, right, and so on. So that is a really, really simple example. Here's another competitor, right, the H1, how to rank and rent websites. So you see here the main keyword they're doing? Go match the H1 point, rank and rent websites. Now scrolling through here, what are they doing? How is rank and rent different? Subheading, who invests in rank in renting ranked websites? All right, scroll down further, newly opened businesses. This is H3s. The steps to create a rank and rent website, I think, is also one, and so on. Again, just looking through the subheadings that our competitors have. Here's another one. What are rank and rent websites? Right, you see the, the common ones here, like what is rank and rent or what are rank and rent websites? Pretty much all three competitors had a H2 like this taking the micro authority route. Again, I only saw this just on this page here specifically, moving from clients to advertisers, building your own rank and rent website from scratch, and then you have the hitch freeze, find your niche, and so on. Basically, what would I do? I'd go through and I'd copy and paste every single one of these subheadings, and then I'd look at what the common ones are, and then I'd basically just make sure that I have the same ones on my page. It's really, really simple. I'm not going to do that process right now because it takes me 10, 15 minutes to prepare it. And frankly, this video is already nearly an hour long in terms of recording currently. So let's just keep it simple. Essentially, the strategy is to look through what your competitor is doing for subheadings and then copy them. Very, very simple. Next up, we have the word count. Now, this isn't a major ranking factor, but it does matter. But a simple reason is that you don't want to stand out in a, well, bad way, meaning that if all of your competitors have a 5,000 word guide on how to do rank and rank, go back to the previous example, and then you just have a 200, 300 word guide, you probably will not rank for that keyword, right? Or if you're trying to rank the best meat smokers and everyone else has a, again, 2,000 word review and you just have a 100 word review that is bad, likewise, if you have a 10,000 word review, then that could also be bad because it stands out. Again, you don't really want to stand out. You want to be kind of in line with what Google likes for this chosen keyword. Now, you already probably know what word count is. Again, it's just the number of words on the page within the content. So really, here's a few guidelines to make this simple. Number one, aim for the average or just slightly over the top ranking similar competitors. What does similar mean? Let me open up Ahrefs and explain. Okay, going back to this keyword once again, what we see again, this is guides, guides, guides. What's gonna happen though is search engine ladder in here and Reddit in here, these two results right here, they are not similar competitors. Now, they're not similar, but one because they're DI90 websites, so that's huge already, but also it's not the same type of content, so we're not trying to match what they're doing, it's gonna bring down our recommended averages, right? So exclude these two competitors, and then you're gonna go through the rest of these and figure out what is the word count on that page, and then you wanna match the average or slightly beat that average. Really simple. Again, while you're doing this, be careful to satisfy the intent. It's not just about more content. There used to be some really bad advice out there that said, find how much your competitors have and then double it. And again, that is bad advice, to be honest, okay? Satisfy the intent. If someone's looking for what is the weather, they don't need a 10,000 word article to explain the history of how people determined what the weather is today. They just wanna know what the weather is today, right? Really, really simple. And then remember, that non-paragraph content is also included in the count. Meaning if you have a table and there's information in the table, that is included in the count. If you have an e-commerce store and there's products, that is included in the count. So in many cases, you don't need to expand more description on that product category page for e-commerce. You just need to add more products to your store. It's really, really that simple, okay? Don't only look at paragraph content, also look at other types of content on the page also. Moving on to something a little bit more advanced and a little bit more nuanced is keyword density. Keyword density measures how much the keyword is included in the content in short. Now we do this as a percentage, but really it's just measuring how many times it's in the content. So if it's in the content 10 times, then obviously that's 10 times in the content, but then we have to consider, okay, how many words of content there are, because if there's 10 times and there's only 100 words, then that's 10%. So that's way too much. But if it's 10 times and it's 10,000 words, well, that can actually be pretty reasonable or maybe it's even low. Right, so it just depends, but that's what keyword density is measuring how much it's used within your content as a percentage. Now, guidelines here, there is no perfect keyword density. All right, everyone's like, you need to include the keyword three times. If you just have it three times, you will rank. If you have it 4.5 times, that is the perfect, like 
No, like that's not how it works. It depends on every single keyword, right? So what do we do here? We look at our competitors and then we match what works. Same for practically every area of SEO. Again, presume in you look at the right competitors, i.e. similar competitors. We talked about it in the keyword research model. Go back and watch it if you forgot. Next up, okay, keyword density applies to the main keyword, but it also applies to secondary keywords, and it also applies to other topics and phrases and effort on your page, meaning you need to be cautious. Now, what I mean by cautious, it means honestly just do it naturally. If you just write your content well and don't focus on any of this stuff, then it's gonna be fine because it's not over-optimized, right? Just by focusing on good content, it's fine. So here's what I recommend, right? It's really simple. Write your content without even thinking about SEO. Right, and that's even better is like don't do it yourself because we probably write we like I suck at writing content about anything other than SEO and things I actually have interest in, right? So pay someone to write this content for you and then don't tell them about SEO, don't tell them my like keywords or anything, just say, hey, the topic is this, please write this article. They're gonna write it, they're not gonna stuff keywords or anything like that because they're not thinking about that because they're writers, they're not SEOs, and then afterwards publish this content check the rankings, and then go ahead and say, okay, what is the keyword density of our competitors? What is the keyword density of our own website? And how can we kind of, maybe we can increase a little bit, or maybe we need to decrease this slightly, but analyze it after the fact, and then it's way, way more effective. You can actually measure the difference. But first, just get the content up, and then you can kind of tweak, okay, let's include this phrase a little bit more. Let's include this main keyword a little bit more, a little bit less. Let's include this partial keywords a little bit more, or again, less, right? Do it after the fact, it's much easier. Start with just good, natural content. Now, there's tools like Surfer that can make this way easier, and my editor here can show a quick clip of how that looks. But don't worry about it, because in the next video, I'm gonna go through how to do this step by step. So let's move on to the next thing, which is image alt text, which stands for alternative text. And what this basically means is if someone, whether that's a person with accessibility issues or whether that is a search engine, can't read the content of this image, they can't look at this image, determine what it is, which by the way, search engines are getting much better at that these days, but still it's better to have this alternative text. And that just describes what the image is. So for example, if you have this picture right here, then you could have an alt text that says, smoker full of meat. It describes what it is, right? Really, really simple. Now guidelines for you guys. The priority here firstly is low. This is a low priority thing. It's just not that important. I recommend doing it because why not? Let's do everything. It's good as you it's good practices, best practices, but it is just low priority overall anyway. I just wanted to include it because, well, we need to include it somewhere. Right? Now what I recommend here is to insert page theme related phrases where relevant. This can be your main keyword. It could also be secondary keywords. It could also just be anything related to that overall topic. For example, if you have a page about iPhones, then guess what? iPhone camera is pretty relevant. If it's an iPhone review, iPhone camera, or even just camera, is relevant to that overall topic. If you have a review about iPhones, then you don't mention it in camera, well, that's a really weird thing to not mention, right? Very, very simple. Beyond that, just be careful not to stuff keywords. Again, this is low priority. And what most people recommend doing is have your alt text for every image and include the keyword here and there and there and there. It's like, well, we have 15 images on this page. It's massively, massively over-optimized, okay? So just remember, this is low priority. It's not important. Don't stuff keywords. Just describe the image, right? And if you can include some topically relevant words in there, that is great, but don't overdo it. It's, it's just very important. And I recommend, again, despite this being low priority, if you can, the best practice is to have this for every single image because it's just best practices and it's great for accessibility, not only just SEO. If someone, again, can't see that image, it's better to have something describing it. It's just best practice, so I recommend doing it anyway. Now, one other thing I need to mention before we wrap up this video, because apparently it still comes up and apparently people still do this, is meta keywords attribute. Now, what this is, is in the olden days of SEO, which probably isn't that old, but nonetheless, the olden days of SEO, people used to have this meta keywords attribute where they just list out, okay, here's a list of keywords we want to rank for. And I kid you not, people being SEOs and taking advantage of this, they would just include a list of like 500 keywords and here is all the keywords you want to rank for, here's all the keywords that are relevant. 
Now today, this isn't used by Google whatsoever, and I recommend just not including it on the page whatsoever. Don't waste any time on it, and don't just give a list of your keywords to your competitors and make it easier for them, right? Just don't do it. So my editor here can like like beep here, like like cross this out, do something cool or whatever he does. It's, he does it, not me. Then um, just say, don't do this, all right? Do not use meta keywords. Done. Next up, what do we have? Okay, so that actually wraps it up. Thankfully, All right? This video is over an hour long. I apologize for dragging out so long. That wraps up. These are the fundamentals, and these fundamentals are practically the same every single time. And these fundamentals are the first things you want to do when you're optimizing your pages and your content. Just get this done first. Now, from here, we're going to dive into some more nuanced stuff and some more advanced stuff in the next videos. But what you need to remember first is that this applies to every single web page. I specifically wrote web page here, not page, because I want to mention that this happens on blog posts, or site info, on category, on even if you have a tags and everything like that index, then it applies to tags and everything too. I recommend probably not indexing them. But the point is, it applies to every single web page on your website. So make sure you're doing it site wide. So it's on page, but it's the entire website, right? So at this point, look guys, that covers the fundamentals. In the next video, we're going to go into content and how exactly to optimize your content. It's going to get a little bit more advanced. We're going to go through some tools and help you go through this step by step, how exactly to do that. With that said, I'm losing my voice. I've been talking for over an hour now. I hope this is helpful. If it is, do me a favor, please, please go ahead and click that little like button. Just give it a little tap. Click that like button so I know you guys like this content, so YouTube recommends this to more people. And so I have some reason, some really mundane, lame reason for losing my voice just so I can get some likes. All right. I appreciate you watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video.